Hey, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sip and Listen. Today we have our two new, well, actually, Chris, you were on last week, but Chris Lupo's here. I'm a veteran. I know. It's like easy <laughs> now, right? Um, and I think you worked out this morning, right? No. No? No, I did my mindset work. Oh, yeah. that's a little meditation in yeah. the morning? Med- meditation, affirmations, all that. Yep. Is that like an always in the morning? Every day. How long? 5 a.m. Been doing it for about a month. I been did it for a while, a couple of years ago, and I just got back into doing it. Hmm. How long does that take in the morning? Uh, about an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. And then yeah. we have the credit master, Valerie James, back. Good morning. Good morning. Did you do some numbers this morning? Numbers? Uh, no, in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> On the way here. We actually yeah. had some drinks this weekend. <laughs> it was actually kind of fun to kind of catch up and not work. Yeah. It was really oh. relaxing. Very oh. nice. On a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was really nice. And then we have... Bryce is back. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Gosh, it's been, what, a couple of months since you were last here? Yep. And we actually were thinking about doing some topic about work and life and the balance. Yes. Kind of making it work. And um, you were kind of like backing off that topic for a bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's called resistance. You know, it's um, it shows up in everyone's life. And when you brought that up to me, I, I was upset. I was um, frustrated um, because it's something that, um, I, I struggle with a lot when I come here, I usually have something pre done of what I'm going to talk about and inspirational and this, that kind of thing. And this is something that, um, has been the demise of a 15 year relationship of mine because I didn't master the work life balance. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of crying, a lot of not being around my kids, building a, building a business. So, um, over time I learned that it's okay to have a little bit of unbalance within the balance. And um, I'll, I'll get into that later, but yeah. It's funny because I don't think there's ever really a balance to yeah. it. Like there's never really something that you can say every day. Like that's why I ask, like, is that always your morning ritual? Well, I'm, I've learned to be open to anything and attached to nothing. That that's alone a, is just like, yeah. what? Mm-hmm. True. So it's almost know, like having a commitment to something, but not being attached to how it turns out. Well, the, the, not having expectations. Sometimes when you have expectations that are too grand, you know, you, you get stressed out, you get, you know, all that. I don't know. We're st- sitting with Bryce. Like, the man is grand. I see that. And it was funny because I think when you first started, you have just a vision that you were just like, no, it's going to go this way. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you can call that attachment or commitment, but it was definitely something that you, like, that's what inspired me yeah. about you. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought I had it figured out. I called it most, more of a work-life um, integration or basically what I would do is I would always be working, but be with my family, be with people, you know, be with them, but I wasn't present. Um, and, um, you know, something happened a couple of years ago um, where me and my ex broke up. She finally, you know, had it and did, did some things. And I brought this up before. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that had to do with my balance. And it was funny because after that, um, my my son so my, my, my ex called me, she goes, I'm really busy today. Can you come pick up the kids? So, and I'd never really, cause I've never changed a diaper. And my, you know, my ex really took care of things. She didn't work, you know, she still doesn't. She, she really holds it down. She's like a super mom. So I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I picked up the kids. We went and we got some food. We went to the park, we played, brought them back home, you know, gave my son a bath. We watched a movie and I, and I, you know, tucked my kids to bed at night. And I remember taking my son into bed him, you know, going to sleep. I put, took my daughter to bed, gave her a kiss, and I walk. I go to walk out. And she goes, "Dad, she goes, I had the best. I had the best time today." And I'm like, "Good, honey." She goes, "No, I had the best time of my life today." And I closed the door, and literally, I had a lump in my throat, and I just started sobbing. And I made my I made my way to a whiteboard, and I um, because I'm always on my whiteboard, you know. And it took about a half an hour of just crying, and then stop crying, and crying, and stop crying. And that was kind of the changing point for me, work life balance, because. I sat there with my, you know, my map, right, or of, of the week and said, how can I integrate my kids into this? And, you know, you know, if you if you look at a, a week's map and you can say, OK, so every Tuesday and Wednesday I see them and then, you know, I work these times, I integrate this. But it was boring. It was like, I can't live like this, like eating chicken every day. Right. I mean, if you if you have a set schedule, it doesn't work. And what I realized is that I opened up my calendar to a month, two months, three months. And I think if you intertwine all of them. You know, if I look at, so this is, we're talking about money marketing, you know, and, and entrepreneurship, right? If I look at a competitor of mine <clears throat> and some people say, man, your competitor, he's always working. That's boring. 
how do you find inspiration? How do you find different ways to bring things, different elements in your business? Well, sometimes you're very highly on the spiritual level. Sometimes you're working out a lot more. Sometimes you're working your ass off, right? Because you, you sometimes you have to burn the candle at both ends and really get it. All of these things have to be in some sort of way there. But I think that if you take them and mix them up and accept the fact that this season, I'm going all in. But this season, I'm not. You know, when I go on tour, I don't drink alcohol. It's one of my things. I don't drink. I'm focused. I'm hardcore on it. I don't really see my kids much. It's a FaceTime thing. But then when I'm home, I see my kids. I'm popping bottles. I'm having fun with my friends, right? But I'm learning to kind of accept the fact that, you know, that's okay. As long as I'm conscious, very conscious about the fact that those are all, all of those are, are rolled into, the, into, into that in some capacity. I'm going to ask you a question because I'm going to take you back to when your daughter said that. What yeah. happened at, to you at that moment? Because it's like <clears throat> I, I got the the emotion that really developed. But what happened for you there? Like it, it was that I wasn't really present. And when I was with her, I was always busy and not there. And that one time when I was actually alone with them. Right. Because I and, I, and it's, it's it's embarrassing. It's something I feel like a coward for. You know, I. I I, I, you know, my whole, whole life, I just worked and worked and worked. I mean, I, you know, and I even, you know, we've talked about this before too. I mean, I chartered a private jet to be able to have them on the plane with me mm -hmm. to travel with me. And then my ex got vertigo. Um, she couldn't be on the plane because she, we, she lasted about a couple months and then it didn't work. And then there I was home twice a month. Right. And then, you know, a lot of FaceTime, even when I was home, I was in my mind and it's something that I still struggle with. Um, and in that moment, I remember being with them alone, being on the playground and just and just spending time with them and putting my phone away. And that was it wasn't I didn't buy her a PlayStation. They didn't pick a Disney World. It was on the park having food with her. And that was the best day of her life. Mm. I was like, oh, my God, I have been totally just absent. Um, Quality so, time. yeah, yeah. I commend your daughter for actually saying it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's in those moments like you really realize what's of value. Mm hmm. That's a spiritual awakening, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's 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 one of those things that just snaps you right out of it. And again, too, the, the the important part though of anyone in business is to have all those elements. I think it's so you know the spiritual element, the and even not, not spiritual, even the I I th I, I consider spirituality even even philanthropy, right? Mm -hmm. Giving back. There's yep. a, there's a spiritual wickedness wickedness in that contributing uh, to the world. Yeah, yeah. There's. Um, so having all those pieces, you know, I learn more about flying to Thailand on vacation than I do sitting in an office for, for three hours, you know. And, and so when I look at my competition, you know, and my savagery in, a, in an industry and someone tells me, yeah, that guy works all the time. It's like, yeah, think globally. You're thinking. Globally yeah. You're yeah. You, you open your mind up. It's funny that and that's why this resistance thing happened with me, you know, me coming here. Um, cause I kind of got all upset and frustrated and like, oh my God, I hate talking about this because, you know, I really have nothing to add to this. Um, you have experience to add to this, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Life I got experience. this, I got this thing. If you, heard, you guys sign up for this thing, it's called Tut and it's Tut Universe or something. Ch check it out. Um, T-U-T Universe or, and, and it's a note from the universe. Every few days I get this thing. And it was so funny. This came in this morning and it goes, picture if you will, Bryce, the disciplinary who micromanages every step and they're very careful dance with life, right? So they're so all about balance, right? Every little thing. <clears throat> then picture the hooligan whose only disciplines are daydreaming and showing up. Now, who do you think is most likely to be heard hoo-hooing from the top of their lungs as they cruise along with jail drive or some wind, uh, winding mountain roads, top down, shades up, saying, I did it my way. That was my email today. Did it? That was your email I got say? the same oh, email. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That is awesome. Yep. Yeah. Totally. So it's like when I was walking in here, I'm like, wow. And how funny that hits me when I'm all in resistance coming here. Yep. Um, yeah. That's how it works, man. Yeah. Synchronicity. Yep. Where is your son in all this? Like, I, is he the oldest? He's the youngest. Oh, he's the youngest. Yeah, he's the youngest. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. And he, you know, he's kind of a, a little butterfly sweetheart, you know, um, where my daughter's a little more, you know, focused and kind of, you know, just a little different. So she kind of, you know, she, she, I mean, the things that come out of her mouth and I got to watch what I say, or you know how they are. I got to watch what I say around her. And, and for her to say that was like, whew. so that was. That was a little under two years ago. So it hasn't been that long. 
So when you take out the whiteboard, are you looking more for like chunks of time that you can actually add everything that you're wanting? <clears throat> That's what I was. And there was a lot of sex involved in that. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, as in, and, and when I did it, it was like, okay, you know, I wake up in the morning. I where, where I have sex. Right? I I know it sounds. I know I'm getting. I always get like this when I'm on the show. I, know, I, love I, know, it. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I have sex. Disclaimer. Right? Back I go, on. Yep, You're going back, down my back path. on there. Yep. Back on the so and then I you know I do this. I have sex. Right. And then I you know I have I have I have you know breakfast with my kids. I do three days of uh, three hours of work, four hours of work. I go have fun with. I you know I I um, do sports with friends or go to lunch with friends. Work. And then it was um, I um, I go to a, uh, you know, you know a, a, a bar with uh, some buddies. Then I come home, spend time with my kids, and then you know I go to bed, have sex, then go to bed. So I think it was four sexes in, in all in, in one day. So it's a lot. But when I looked at that, that was even boring. And I'm like, that this is. This is gonna, and I was frustrated with myself. I'm like, how selfish am, am, am I that I can't commit to, to to spend time with my kids every day because everyone else does. But then I started to realize and look at it. I'm like, okay. Who, you know what works for me you know and what works for me is opening that up and saying okay you know as long as i see my kids you know six times during you know with this many hours during the month right and we spend real quality time and if it's more than that i mean we're facetiming we're talking whatever um that works for me and then but but but, I, but just know that that's going to change with being conscious about it that that some months are going to be heavy on one side and some months will be heavy on the other side and I think through that, you become dynamic, you become progressive, and that's how you find your purpose. You're not going to find your purpose living a stagnant life of being balanced. The unbalancedness is what has you going out there, has you doing backflips into the unknown. It's that contrast. Yeah. You know? Yep. It's being open to change or being open to new possibilities. Yep. And it's it's awesome. Yeah. To totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you ever check in with the kids and see how they're evaluating things well my ex daughter just uh i don't know if it was my ex-wife on my daughter's phone she saw it and it was you know those gifts mm -hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> and now, now, this is where you're going to realize that i'm still working on this okay <laughs> one of the gifts said work 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 and, it was one of the, and the other one had a bunch of cash and they were doing that i can show it to you right now and i don't know if it was my ex doing these little nasty things to do just to oh. tell me to calm down or it was my daughter because sometimes, see, but here, I'm gonna, I know we can't see it on the How radio. How old is she now? She's eight. And she's mm. a little pain in my butt right now. Oh, my Love gosh. <laughs> she was a daddy's girl. And now it's like so these cute. little snarky remarks. And um, but yeah, I'll show yes. you guys in a minute. They own us. I mean, kids just oh, yeah. own us and they know how. Right here. Right oh. around the little finger. <laughs> Uh, that's that genius. Genius. What does that mean? All right, wait, hold on. I gotta take a picture of that because that's just too good. Oh my gosh. Uh, I didn't know is. what to take from that, but it's like so I gave her the I gave her the emoji with the eyes roll. Like I gave her that emoji though. Like, oh gosh, here we go. I'm getting lectured by my daughter again. Does she have vision yet? Like, does she have the Oh my god. Can you see her actually owning she, some well, companies? On her iPad, she knows she tells me what what Bitcoin's value at right now. So we go through that. Nice. And she knows that, you know. She knows that you have to step in the role to, to manifest your dreams. I've actually have videos of me and, you know, and she knows the value of a dollar. You know, she she has a purse and she carries money around with her and she, you know, she earns her money. I'm not going to give I, want, I mean, I'm, you know, to a certain extent, but I want her to know the value of a dollar and, and she needs to work for everything that she has. Um, so, yeah, she does. Yeah, she's really excited. You know, and she's a, she's an artist and. You know, my whole role on college, I think it's a I think it's a scam. You know, I think it's I mean, it used to be at one point was a great place to educate someone to put them in a job to, you know, to ignite, you know, um, uh, you know, the industrial revolution. Well, and not to say that it's not. I mean, if you're a doctor, yes, please go yeah, to school. Yeah. But like and there's certain there's certain mm -hmm. situations that are it's really not going to like you're still gonna get out there. Doesn't you're still gonna have anything. to live the you're life. Still gonna have to work and live. Yeah. You're still gonna have to brand yourself. Yeah. You're still yeah. to create um, remarkable. Like marketing in your for one. Like you should just get yeah. out there and do it because yep. there's nothing in school that's really gonna give you what's life can give you. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Experience and you know a lot of entrepreneurs have less than a high, high school diploma. Yeah. So living life teaches you very much. Very much so. Ninth grade dropout right here. Yeah.